All right, we're doing lesson 11.1. We're going to take uh, equations that are in standard form and change it into vertex form. Question you should be able to answer by the end of the lesson is what number completes the square for the binomial x squared plus 3x. Bonus question, which binomial square did you find? So by the end of the lesson, you should be able to figure this out. If you get to the end of the lesson and you still don't know the answer, you should probably ask your teacher. So here we go. A couple of units ago, we noticed that when we were multiplying binomials and we had problems that said x plus 3 squared, <clears throat> this is what we called a binomial square. What we noticed is we were not allowed to just multiply x times x and 3 times 3. The answer was not x squared plus 9. We said two units ago that this was the same thing as x plus 3 times x plus 3. And if we just answered x squared plus 9, we noticed that we were actually missing a term. The actual answer should be x squared plus 6x plus 9. Oh, I got an email. All right, so, and we said that you could do the FOIL method. You could do, like, the area model. So some of you like that, where you kind of set it up in the box method. Some people called it the Punnett square, whatever you want to call it. So we could do x plus 3 times x plus 3. And here we'd get x squared, 3x, 3x, and 9. And we notice that these two numbers here form to give us that 6x in the middle. So what we have here is we're going to look for a pattern. We know that the 6 is the b value and that the 9 is the C value. There is actually a pattern that's happening between the B and the C. So if you were only given the B, what two operations would get you to this C? So that's what I want you to think about. If you're only given this part of the equation, and you know that this was 6, and you knew it was a binomial square, what two operations would get you to this 9? Just so you have something else to look at, let's do one more. We'll do x minus 5 squared. So we know that's x minus 5 times the quantity x minus 5. And if we put it into our Punnett square or area model and multiply it out or the FOIL method, whatever you're doing, we would get x squared minus 10x plus 25. So like we said before, the b value here is negative 10. The c value is 25. So if you were only given this very first part of the equation and you knew that it was a binomial square like one of these, what is the pattern to get you from negative 10 to positive 25. Now it's the same pattern that's gonna get you from six to nine. So it's one pattern. You would do two operations to go from here to here. So think about it, maybe press pause until you figure out that pattern. Okay, so some of you might've gotten it already. 
The pattern is if you took this 6 and then divided by 2, so let's do that, 6 divided by 2, and then squared that value, you would get 9. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, and then 3 squared would give you that 9. And the same set of operations works for negative 10. If you take negative 10 and you divide by 2 and then you square it, you get this 25. Because you get negative 5 times negative 5, which is positive 25. So what we call that <coughs> process of if you start here and you're looking for these last two numbers, it's called completing the square. Now what we notice is the B value is divided by 2. and then squared to find the C value. And that's just called completing the square. All right, so here we go. Example number one. We're asking what number completes the square And what binomial square did you find? All right, we're going to do three problems real quick. First one, we're going to take x squared plus 16x. I'm getting lots of emails. And then we're going to find out, so that's the number that's going to complete the square, and then we're going to make a binomial square out of it. So it's going to be x and then something squared. So we're going to do that one. We'll do the next one. We'll do x squared minus 30x. We'll figure out what number completes the square, and then we'll figure out what binomial square we just found. And let's do a third one, because that will make us happy. We'll do a hard one. x squared plus 5x. All right, so the process is, here's our b value. Our B value on this one is 16. So what did we say we did? Up here we said we're going to take the B value, we're going to divide it by 2, and then we're going to square it to find the C value. And these blanks are the C value. So for my B value there, I'm going to take 16, divide by 2, and square. So 16 divided by 2 is 8. And then 8 squared is 64. So the number that completes the square is going to be 64. And we have made a perfect binomial square. So this number here is the number that makes us into a trinomial square. All right, so what perfect square did we just make? Well, we have to look at and see what number we squared right here. We squared 8. So this is the perfect square of x plus 8 squared. So whatever number you square right here is the perfect square that you're making. 
All right, let's take the second one. Uh, if you want to feel really saucy, you can try this one out on your own. Hit pause or something. But I'm going to take negative 30. The process we said is divide by 2 and then square it. So we divide it by 2, square it. So negative 30 divided by 2 is negative 15. And then we all know that negative 15 squared is 225, of course. So we get positive 225. We're always going to get positive 225 because when you square a number, it always becomes positive. So this 225 is the number that completes the square over here. And then we have to ask ourselves, what perfect square did we just make? Well, negative 15 is the number that we squared. So we made x minus 15 squared. And if you don't believe me, just multiply it back out in the Punnett square or the area model or whatever you're calling it. All right, last one. We're going to take 5, cut it in half. Oh, no, that doesn't reduce. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take 5 over 2 times 5 over 2. So I'm going to square the 5 and get 25. I'm going to square the 2 and get 4. So 5 over 2 times 5 over 2 is 25 over 4. That is the number that I would use to complete the square, 25 over 4. And what number did I square? I squared 5 over 2. So this is going to be x plus 5 over 2. Do not turn it into a decimal at this point. We're going to see later on why we want to leave these as fractions. But for right now, keep them as fractions. You'll see later why that's better than decimals. All right. So that is just the starting point. We are now going to use that process to convert from standard form to vertex form. You are not done yet. That was just the beginning. At example two. I got a problem here, f of x equals x squared plus 6x plus 10. Now in the last unit, you would have looked at this problem, you're like, okay, I've got to, since I have a bx term in, in the middle here, you would have said, I got to factor it and then set my factors equal to zero. Problem is, this one does not factor. There are no factors of 10 that add up to six. So in the last unit, we wouldn't have been able to solve this one. And it would have been really hard to graph it. So we're going to convert it to vertex form because we found out last unit the vertex form was the easiest form to graph into. So step one, we're gonna move the C value to the other side. All right, so I'm going to subtract 10 from this side because this is my C value. I'm going to subtract 10 from this side. So that gives me f of x and then I've got a minus 10 over here now so that's what changed equals x squared plus 6x. So we move the C value to the other side, step two. We're going to find the value that completes the square. So up here, we said the B value is divided by 2, then squared to find the C value. That's called completing the square. So my B value is right here, 6. So I'm going to take 6, divide by 2, and then square it. So 6 divided by 2 gives us 3. 3 squared 
is 9. That is the number that completes the square. Step 3. We're going to add the number to both sides of the equation. All right, so we know that in algebra, if you do something to one side of the equation, you have to do it to the other side. So this 9, I want it on this side, but if I put it on this side, I also have to put it on this side of the equation. So over there, I've got f of x minus 10, and then I'm going to add 9. On the other side of the equation, I've got x squared plus 6x. I should have planned out my spacing a little bit better, but that's fine, plus 9 over here. All right, so I added 9 to both sides of the equation. That was step 3. I found out the number that completes the square. It's 9. Now this side's a perfect square. And since I added it to one side, the addition property of equality tells us we have to add to the other side as well. All right, step 4. We're almost there. Step four, we're going to simplify this side, and then we're going to write the binomial square that we made on this side. So we're going to simplify. And write the binomial square. So on this side, simplifying, negative 10 plus 9 is negative 1. So on that side, I'm going to get f of x minus 1. On the other side, what binomial square did I just make here? Well, I have to go back up here and ask myself, what number did I square? I squared 3. So I just made the perfect square x plus 3 squared. So that value, just like we did above on example one, that value is the number that we plug in right here for the perfect square. We're almost done. This really looks like vertex form, except for this over here. We're going to take our last step and move that to this side, and then it'll be in vertex form. So last step, put it in vertex form. So my last step, I add 1 to this side, and I add 1 to this side, using the addition property of equality, and I get f of x equals the quantity x plus 3 squared plus 1. So now it's in vertex form, and from last unit, we can see that our vertex must be at negative 3, positive 1, because we always use the opposite of this value. So negative 3, positive 1 would be our vertex. All right, we've got a couple pro problems to practice, and then we'll be done. All right, we're going to go a little bit faster here. So slow it down if I'm going too fast. Example three. We've got f of x equals x squared minus 12x minus 8. First step we said was to move the c value to the other side, so I'm going to add 8 to both sides of the equation. So I add 8 here, and I add 8 here. That yields f of x plus 8 equals x squared minus 12x. Okay, now we have to ask ourselves what number will complete the square. We take the b value, which is negative 12. Don't forget the negative. We're going to do negative 12, and then we divide by 2, and we square it. So negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. We square it. Negative 6 squared is positive 36. You're always going to get a positive number right there. That was step 2. Step 3, we're going to add that 36 to both sides of the equation here. So we do f of x 
plus 8, plus what's that, 36, equals x squared minus 12x plus 36. So I added 36 to both sides of the equation. Fourth step, we simplify this side, and then we write this side as a perfect square. So on this side, we do f of x. 8 plus 36 is 44-ish. Yeah, 44. Over here, the number that we squared was negative 6. So this is the perfect square of x minus 6 squared. Last step, we need to make it in vertex form, so I subtract 44 from both sides. I get f of x equals quantity x minus 6 squared minus 44, because I subtracted 44 from both sides. So my vertex must be at positive 6, negative 44. All right, so that was a little too easy. So now we're going to do some problems that are a little bit harder. What if we had an a value? So there's a number in front of x squared. f of x equals 2x squared plus 20x minus 1. First step is the same. We're going to add 1 to both sides. So I'm going to do f of x plus 1, because I add 1 to both sides, equals 2x squared plus 20x. All right, I need a new step here, because all the other things that I've done have not had a a value. They've only had an a value of 1. Now I have an a value of 2. What we're going to do is we're going to factor out this 2. So we're going to factor out the a value. So that's my new step. This side stays the same. Over here, I can factor out a 2. Remember, you have to factor out of both of the terms. So we get x squared plus 10x. All right, and now I'm going to complete the square, but just this portion right here, just the x squared plus 10x. So the b value is 10 in there. So I'm going to take the b value, which is 10, divide by 2, and square it. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. And 5 squared is 25. All right, so here's the tricky part. I'm going to do f of x plus 1. And I'm going to have to add a number, but don't put anything there yet because we got a little bit of problem here. Over here, I'm going to do x squared plus 10x. I'm going to add a little bit of a number right there. All right, now the number that I'm going to add, I said is 25, so I'm going to put a 25 right there. So plus 25. But I'm not going to add 25 to this side because I really didn't add 25 over here. There's a 2 out here. So this 25 for the entire side isn't just 25, it's 2 times 25. So I didn't just add 25, I added 2 times 25 to that side. So on this side, I have to plug in 2 times 25, which is 50. So the number I add to this side is 50. Because over here, when I put 25 in here, it has a number out here that needs to be distributed. So this is 2 times 25, which is 50 over there. So that's our extra step there that makes it a little bit confusing. So that's what to watch out for. If you put a number in here, you have to multiply by this number in order to figure out how much you actually added to that entire side. So then the last two steps are the same. We're going to simplify this side, and we get f of x plus 51 equals 2. 
What perfect square did we make here? Well, the number that I squared was 5. So this is x plus 5 squared. And then our last step is to put it into vertex form, and we subtract 51 from both sides. So we get 2 times the quantity x plus 5 squared minus 51. So what's our vertex? Our vertex is negative 5, negative 51. All right, one last problem like that, just in case you're a little bit confused. Here we go, example 5, then you're ready for your homework. Example 5, we've got f of x equals 3x squared plus 12x plus 5. I'll start by subtracting 5 from both sides. So I'm going to subtract 5 here, subtract 5 here. I get f of x minus 5 <coughs> equals 3x squared plus 12x. All right, we've got a new step here. Remember, we have to factor out the a value. So I'm going to factor out this 3 over here first. So this side stays the same. I factor out the 3. I'm left with x squared plus 4x, because you have to factor out the 3 out of both of these. So I factored out the 3. Now we're on to the old step 3. Or is it step 2? I can't remember. Anyways, we're going to take this and complete the square. So we ask yourself, what number completes the square? Our b value is 4. So we take 4, divide by 2, and we square. So this is 2 squared, which is 4. So 4 is the number that we're going to add to this side. But remember, we do not add 4 to this side. So f of x minus 5, more emails, blank, equals 3 times x squared plus 4x. And then we're going to add 4 to that side. So what number did we actually add to this side? Well, it's 4 times 3. So this is 3 times 4. So the number that we add to this side is actually 12. All right, so now we're going to simplify and then find the perfect square over here. So we do f of x, and then this is plus 7, equals 3. This perfect square... 2 is the number that we squared, so we get x plus 2 squared. Last step, subtract 7 from both sides. f of x equals 3 x plus 2 squared. We're going to subtract 7 from both sides. We get negative 7. So our vertex is at negative 2, negative 7. That's it. You're ready to do your homework, so you should do worksheet 1 from unit 11. Bye-bye.